NPR is not a radio station. It produces and distributes programming that your local public radio station purchases, but your public radio station is not NPR. Why that's important, today on Morning Sedition. <laughs> Most public radio stations started out with music programming, and the majority of the hosts on the stations were locals. NPR first started broadcasting its content in 1971. Public radio stations across the country first carried All Things Considered, and Morning Edition followed shortly after. The rest of the programming on local stations would be all sorts of music, often classical, opera, jazz, bluegrass, local performers, and interviews with local people. People who've been in public radio for a long time tell me that public radio stations started carrying more news programming from outside sources, including NPR, after 9-11. The public became more interested in receiving news after that attack. NPR started creating and distributing more content in the past 20 years, and more public radio stations were picking it up. NPR creates Morning Edition, All Things Considered, Weekend Edition, Here and Now, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, Invisibilia, and the TED Radio Hour. It also produces podcasts that your local station might play, including Throughline, Up First, Planet Money, and Code Switch. Also, NPR distributes programs created at public radio stations or individuals through its network. These include 1A, Fresh Air, Latino USA, and StoryCorps. You might think all of your favorite programs you listen to on public radio come from NPR, but public radio stations also purchase programming from American Public Media, or APM, and Public Radio Exchange, or PRX. APM distributes BBC World Service and The Splendid Table, while PRX distributes Selected Shorts and This American Life. Among these three main distributors, NPR has the most influence over public radio stations. NPR has a tight financial relationship with public radio stations because when a station purchases Morning Edition and All Things Considered, they can get a host of other content from NPR in a package. Morning Edition and All Things Considered are really expensive, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year for midsize and larger stations, and millions of dollars a year for really large stations. A station won't have a lot of money for other programming after purchasing these or for other staff. So NPR makes it really easy for stations to fill up many hours with NPR products through package deals. NPR also has a training program for young journalists that go on to work in public media stations across the country, of course, spreading NPR's agenda and ideology far and wide. So newsrooms in public radio stations are very close with NPR news. Also, NPR is seen as helpful by management at many public radio stations. NPR provides guidelines about best practices, and it offers some training opportunities at radio conferences and online. Managers love this. It removes the onus of being involved in hard questions and creative possibilities. They just do what NPR does, and it means less local on-air staff to manage. NPR loves that people think NPR and public radio are the same thing, and there's the added benefits that everyone thinks all the programs are from NPR, which isn't true. And public radio stations have been proud to be NPR affiliates, so they generally don't mind that people think they are NPR. Regarding APM and PRX, they follow standards set by NPR because public radio stations do. And to sell your product to a public radio station, you will get in line with NPR standards. One big problem is that public radio stations have started broadcasting so much outside programming, including NPR programming, over the last couple of decades that the tone and the flavor of the content has become standardized, stagnant, ideologically uniform. You know exactly what the position is going to be on any topic, who's going to be interviewed, what elements of a nationwide poll will be highlighted, and what elements will be completely ignored total uniformity. When NPR makes a decision to use a term like pregnant people instead of pregnant women, that decision ripples out to public radio stations and public media content providers instantly. 
Everyone at stations across the country may not instantly make changes, but in my experience, eventually everyone will. And this effect occurs not merely with language, but with what stance to take about certain ideas and about certain people. A gentleman named Scott, who commented in a previous episode about why he stopped listening to NPR, he said, the well is poisoned. It's worse than that. NPR is not a well. It's more like a water system with pipelines reaching into every public media station across the country and into the cars and homes of every listener. And when that water is contaminated at the source, well... I don't mean to sound apocalyptic here. It's just a metaphor. But that's the situation with NPR and public radio that nobody will talk about or tell you. But it is essential to understand how the ideology spreads. Thank you for watching this excerpt from an episode of All Things Reconsidered. To watch the full episode, please follow the link in the description. (laughs) 